think Wilmington compares to those benchmark cities that you mentioned in terms of image, brand awareness, things to differentiate ourselves, to promote and recruit? How do you think the imperialism? <laughs> Come on up here. I think we need help. Um, well, if you look at the catalytic study, um, and, and we looked at, uh, I need Sally's help here, but 30, about 30 benchmark cities. Um, maybe it was 35. 35, thank you, uh, Connie. Um, the uh, Wilmington came out right in the middle. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think Catalytics probably does that on purpose uh, to you know, <laughs> make you feel a little bit good about yourself but still have room for improvement. Um, but it's interesting the things that, that, uh, that we compared ourselves to and where we came out um, in the various categories. Um, you know, we actually came out very high in entrepreneurship and, and job creation, which was surprising to us. And that we think that may have been um, a, a bit of a, a blip um, um, on, the, on, on, the, on the chart for the year that they, they looked at it. But we did, we, we came in um, pretty low on the creative index piece, on the hardcore, and looking at the arts community, looking at the um, uh, number of artists per thousand, the uh, arts dollars spent per thousand, um, looking at the uh, um, amount of cultural offerings um, and so forth. I mean, we ranked in the lower quartile um, in several of those statistical categories. And so those are really the places we want to look at. But we need an arts council. We've got to have an arts council in this community. I mean, we are the, uh, by far the largest community in the, in the state of North Carolina um, without an arts council. I mean, Ahoski, North Carolina has an arts council. Um, but somehow we can't seem to, uh, to get one formed. So um, you know, that's a real wake-up call for us. We have to be able to respond to that and, and get that in place. I think, and, and that brings up another point. There are some basic, um, there, there's some basic uh, foundational and structural things that we need to have in place to handle a lot of the things that, that, that the bill has brought up and, and others. Um, we, need to, um, we need to address you know, the arts as, as a baseline, but I also um, am a strong advocate for this foundation of a civic design center. And what that would do is create a forum for civic discussion and debate about, um, about design, architecture, urban planning, and growth. So much of what we talk about downtown and we get caught up in the, in the, in the mire of is looking at uh, you know, small-scale minutia about, well, how come we don't have granite curbs on the Front Street project? You know, but we got granite curbs. You know, how come this building is 20 feet instead of 40 feet? Or, or, or how come this um, looks like this versus that? That's the type of thing that most cities of our size have a civic design center to place those discussions in. And the other thing that can do is to um, provide an air, a, a place where um, developers who want to do the right thing, they want to build to the standard that we want to see downtown and want to invest in our downtown, we can welcome them with open arms and hand, hand them to someone within the city structure that can say, yes, you're doing the right thing. We're going to help make it easier for you to get your project through the process. We're going to help you navigate the system and get you off the ground and running. That's the type of incentive that Bill mentioned um, uh, a little bit earlier that can help get quality growth and development into our downtown area. That's the type of thing we need. I will also add from, from Chris's comments and from Elizabeth's question in terms of regional marketing, if you look at our competitive set and what other cities are doing, you pick up an Inc. magazine or other you know, publications that target entrepreneurs. Savannah's had a campaign going there for a while that says, you know, come, come to Savannah, you, we have fiber optic cable beneath cobblestone streets. I mean, they're selling the same thing we have. I mean, this is a great place to do business, great place to have a technology company, but in a smaller town environment where you have an easier life, better quality of life for your family. It, it does seem, though, and, and again, I've only been here four years, but I do think from folks from the perspective of the outside looking in, I'm not sure they're hearing from us. So, and, and that, obviously, starting with the downtown, but that's, that's from the whole region's perspective. The, I want to shift it back to um, a little bit from what, what Bill said and, and kind of ask a leadership question. And Bill is our, our West Point grad with three grad degrees who's, who's worked at some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies, so he's a, kind of our, our leadership expert, uh, at least from the business side here. What, I mean, you said before, you think it's a lack of focus right now. What can you kind of imagine downtown as PPD? How do you address this this issue? Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how many there are. There are 15 or 20 various organizations focused somehow, some way on the downtown. You know, maybe under the uh, the leadership of the mayor, 
get a representative from each of those, and we figure out what our priorities are. You know, <clears throat> the mayor practically bled on the sidewalks of Wilmington getting the convention center built, but he had a pretty singular focus for a certain period of time and got it done. I think we have to, you know, get a group of leaders together who are representing various organizations and can corral their membership to figure out what the priorities are and what we want to do next. Because we can't do them all at the same time. So what is next? And then let's rally community leadership around that. Well, that's I want to, as the last question to the panel, I want to pose that to each of you. If you, you can do one thing, not, not two or three, Dave. You can do one, <laughs> one, one thing to improve downtown and, and get it done. What is it? Statue of Dave's Petrina. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, to attract, to attract people to, to the attract city. People, yeah. to, to attract <laughs> the pigeons. <laughs> right, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the best suggestion that's come out of this, uh, this group. Um, no, I, I, again, I think that um, the downtown park is a singular thing. It's something that has come up on, on so many of the discussions we've had. It's in the Vision 2020 plan in, in a fa after a fashion. It, it, um, it, uh, changed a bit, but I think that's a great focus that we can all get behind. And right now, there's actually um, there's a there's a grant that the city and and WDI um, has that Cape Fear Future has helped to to um, get involved with to get um, kind of up and running. That is um, in the works right now for the design of a downtown park. But if you can imagine a downtown park that could stretch from Market Street all the way up to uh, potentially the Hilton Hotel and have that amount of of green space down the river, that amount of an area. Uh, for cultural attraction to be a wonderful thing. Thank you. Ben? I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you one for the courts and one for the community. Well, then I want two. Well, well, one. <laughs> I, I know, I swear. For the courts, you know, we have over 70,000 cases a year in the district courts in New Hanover County. Um, most of them are traffic cases, and you saw I set up a traffic court already. My brother's trying to do the same thing. Maybe you've heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> But we, we took out a lot of those cases uh, so that we can try DWIs, domestic violence, the bar fights, the things that take the time in front of judges. I believe the short answer is we need a third district courtroom. Uh, we have two right now running full time. We need three to, to cut out the backlog of DWI cases. My prosecutors are trying sometimes two to 300 cases on a typical day down there, and you, you can't have any more than eight to 10 trials. I don't like giving deals to some of these guys. We're having to, to move the load. I think we need another courtroom. We're, we're having a vote for a judge today uh, to fill uh, John Carroll's vacancy, very unfortunately. And um, I hope that we use that extra judge to start a third courtroom. And I'll be vocal about that in the days ahead. For the community, I believe, again, that the downtown that I see at the courthouse <coughs> is not who's in this room, and it's not really your children. And when it is, you, you all hire an attorney to talk directly to me about their future. Um, the future that I envision for this community um, is about investing in the children that are historically underrepresented. I think we really need to focus on this Blue Ribbon Commission. I think we need to focus on um, what Tim Markley is going to be talking about. We just lifted a charter cap in North Carolina. Let's make a, a, an urban center for excellence in the model of a Harlem Children's Zone. That's what we patterned this youth enrichment zone after. Um, and so when you hear those discussions over the next year about what we can do, um, please show up to that and, and want it so bad that you'd send your own kids there. If we do that, I believe we're on the right path to fighting it long term with the crime that I'm seeing. Because I know who I'm going to prosecute if we don't. Uh, that, that's, that's my hope for downtown. <clears throat> From a business, I'm going to look at it from a government and business perspective. Number one, focused convention center hotel, number one. Number two, additional hotel space, additional hotels for downtown. That's what I'll be focusing on. Second, fabulous park. We're going to need a fabulous open space in our downtown. That's what Charleston has. That's what Savannah has. That's what we don't have. And we're moving in that direction. But I'm going to need your support. I'm going to need every one of your support making this happen and not just say the government is going to do it we we are going to do it raise your hand Everyone all raise of hand. us <laughs> and then third third because i see a lot because <laughs> i know he's going to take 10 anyway no, I'm not. so i'm, I'm going to take three you, got all, you guys got all my good stuff third we need to get the guys like dave Petrino and terry espy and a lot of you that are in this room that are developers people that have taken the chances the entrepreneurs of this world, 
the Cowboys back in the game. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to drive the health and well-being of downtown is the private sector. And we're going to need them back in this and engaged. And I believe as the economy improves, how long that will take, that will happen because we have made the strategic investments from the public sector to make it happen. So those are my three things. <clears throat> You know, I was in Washington, D.C. last week, and I was talking to a <clears throat> ranking member of Congress about, about the farm industry. And uh, just in some side chit-chat, he said, you know, I was a, a city commissioner at 27, and I was a mayor at 29. I said, that's interesting. I said, uh, you know, what was it like being a mayor? And he goes, you know, that's where everything gets done in this country at that level. And he said, you know what the, important thing a the most important thing a mayor has to do? And I said, no idea. He said, he has to say no. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, you know what? Every darn phone call that comes into the mayor's office from someone who says, I need a stop sign here. The traffic's going too fast. He goes, the mayor's, it's easy for him to say yes. They put up a stop sign. Pretty soon the whole place is gridlocked. You can't get from point A to B. <laughs> and you know what? So I'm not going to come out with another idea. But whatever priorities the mayor and his team come up with, let's support the guy on this, all right? One at a time, and let's knock him down. That's how we make progress. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, ready? Go. No, I, I think, um, you know, unlike other panels I've been on, I actually agree with these guys. I agree with, I agree with park space, and I agree with education, and I agree with encouraging development, and I agree with having a clear focus and a goal. But you've got to remember that downtown, it is special, and it deserves your attention. And it convinces people and models them to how they're embraced within this community. Most people who move here, and, and let's get something straight. I mean, I deal with people every day. They migrate to our area. They migrate to our area because it's a very fascinating area. It's a hidden jewel, they say. We never heard of Wilmington. You know, it's anything you hear. But typically, it's because they drove down Market Street, got to the river, turned left or right, rode around, and went, what a charming little town. What a neat space we found. But behind the scenes, things have to happen. Downtowns are never done. They're never at a, at a point where you raise the flag and you go, OK, we're good. We got it. Continually, we are doing things downtown. What I would hope from all of us, as we're working for solutions downtown, that while the mayor sometimes has to say no, I want to create a culture of yes, an area where you are able to say, that's a good idea. That's something I can support. Don't, when I come to you with a great idea, don't tell me why it's not going to work. Recognize I'm coming to you with a good idea because I've thought about it and I want your support. Come to me and create, and let me create a culture of yes. Let's find good solutions. Let's support the people that are making a difference. Let's come up with those ways and continually improve our area. So that's my wish and that's something that we're all capable of doing, working together for common goal. Will you please have a round of applause for all of our panel. I normally don't voice my opinion on, on the topics we discuss here, but in the, the gift we, we got for our panel, I'm kind of doing that. We all we got to meet your book called Urban Green, Innovative Parks for Resurgent Cities. <laughs> and I, I think if you, you know, really listen to the discussion today, what I'm taking away is I think we got a challenge from the mayor as, as a business community to tell him specifically what we want and show that we're going to back him as, uh, as he moves something forward. So my, my, my vote will be uh, in the book they take away. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.